A weekend crash may cause problems for your Monday morning commute in Idaho. We'll tell you where to expect some delays. Texas is banning all red light cameras. Get your phones ready. We want to know whether the inland northwest should do the same. An eight-year-old from the Pacific Northwest will soon compete on a national level. He's doing something most of us cannot do. 5 a.m. on our Monday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York. I'm Taylor Vido. And I'm Evan Nirani. Thank you so much for waking up with us to another day in paradise. Oh, yeah. Right? Happy <laughs> Monday, guys. Happy Monday. Yeah. Well, summer is coming and the pools are filling up. Enjoy a splash in the water at the city's aquatic centers. There are six of them around our region. We do want to remind you they open up on June 17th. But in the meantime, you can cool down with one of Spokane's splash pads. Most of them just opened a few days ago for the season. Splash pads are open from 9 o'clock to 8 p.m. I think a lot of parents around the Northwest are happy to be able to maybe give their time a little bit of give their kid a little bit of time on the splash pad. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, I was talking to one of my friends who was saying like, oh, I just want him to play around in it for hours so that he'll actually nap today. <laughs> well, now that we're, yeah, now that we're getting here, to basically. summer with no school, exactly, it's probably going right? to be like the go do your thing, please. Yeah, exactly. Please give mom and dad some run rest. around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. once those pools open up, all bets are off, right? Absolutely. But we are going to need that with the temperatures being so Ooh, warm. Yeah, 85 Saturday and Sunday. Warmest so far this mm -hmm. year. And uh, as we go on today, we'll still get to the 80s, but a cool down is coming this week. So we're taking a look out toward downtown Spokane, where you can see a good amount of cloud cover is the case to start off the morning. We've got a cold front that is pushing through. It already started uh, overnight, really. So that's where we see this uh, cloud cover begin to move in. And you can really follow almost the line of that cold front as it moved from the west side of the state all the way over to North Idaho and into Western Montana. So what that's going to start to bring is cooler temperatures today, but really we're not cooling down by much. We're expecting another day of 80 degree temperatures on the way. We'll make it to about 80 flat by the time we get to about 4 and 5 p.m. But notice that along the way we're going to see those temperatures warm up and we're also going to see wind speeds pick up. So what happens is as this cold front moves in and encounters warmer air, a difference in pressure creates a lot of wind with us. So what we'll see right now going into the next few hours is just single digit wind speeds from the southwest. Those southwest winds pick up to the 15 mile per hour range going into your afternoon. So really the first couple days of this week are going to be breezy and we're going to see a progressive cool down continue as the week goes on. Right now sustained wind speeds are pretty intense over toward uh, central Washington. Wenatchee is at 20 mile per hour sustained winds right now. Spokane is at 15, so still a bit breezy outside around the Spokane County area. Uh, into Coeur d'Alene we only see six Six mile an hour winds, but of course these are expected to fluctuate as the morning goes on. So the best part of this week's forecast is that we're sticking to that dry weather until we get to the later portion of the week. The downside is of course that right now it looks like by the time we get to your weekend, your Saturday and your Sunday, our chances of wet weather uh, do pick up. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up, but let's take a look at what's going on now at 502 on the roads. Right now we are not seeing any backups or delays, but you can see uh, taking a look out along I-90, people definitely hitting the roads for the morning commute. The sun is officially up and I'll send things back to you, Jen and Taylor. Evan, thank you so much. A weekend crash could put a dent in your morning commute in Idaho. Damage from a suspected DUI crash is causing a closure on Highway 95. Leaders with Coeur d'Alene Police Department say the crash happened early yesterday when a driver hit a traffic light pole. Drivers will not be able to cross the highway on Kathleen Avenue as crews continue to work to repair a damaged traffic light. Leaders with the Idaho Transportation Department say it could take weeks to make the repairs. The driver was arrested on felony DUI charges. Meanwhile, in central Washington, a suspected DUI crash left an eight-year-old boy with a broken back. The wreck happened just southeast of Quincy. A person driving the car failed to stop at a stop sign and went over an embankment. It rolled onto its roof into an irrigation canal and left the boy injured, according to authorities. There were three kids in the back of the truck, and at least one of them was not wearing a seatbelt. The boy was taken to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle. Charges against the driver are pending. 504 this morning. President Trump arrived in the UK this morning to start off a three day visit. And here are three things you need to know about his visit. First, the president will kick off the trip at a banquet hosted by Queen Elizabeth. Tomorrow, he will hold talks with outgoing Prime Minister Theresa May. She is leaving office on Friday. She said she'd move to Canada if you got elected. Turned out she moved to Britain. Well, that would be good. Mm -hmm. 
There are a lot of people moving here. So what can I say? No, I didn't know that she was nasty. Next, Stephen, before he left Washington, D.C., President Trump was on the defense about his comments on Meghan Markle. Despite the audio recording of the comment with the Sun tabloid, the president said he never made those remarks about her. And third, the trip will include a stop in France. The president will travel to Normandy to mark the 75th anniversary of D-Day. He is also expected to meet with the French president and prime minister of Ireland. The Pentagon has told the White House to stop politicizing the military. It follows a statement from the U.S. Navy confirming reports the White House wanted the USS John McCain kept, quote, out of sight during the president's recent visit to Japan. The McCain is currently docked at a U.S. naval base just south of Tokyo. White House leaders reportedly wanted the destroyer moved so the president would not have to see the name of the late Arizona senator. The Navy says all ships remained in their normal configuration despite that request. 505 now, Texas, Governor, Texas uh, governor is making changes to the state's roads. Yeah, he just signed a bill into law banning red light traffic cameras. And we want you to weigh in. Should Washington and Idaho get rid of red light traffic cameras? Just let us know by heading to krem.com slash vote or click on the vote now tab on our Krem2 mobile app. Red light cameras take pictures of cars entering intersections on red lights. Critics say those cameras are unconstitutional and contribute to wrecks. Meanwhile, supporters say red light cameras help make streets safer and generate funds for cities and other government entities. The law is set to take effect on t in Texas on September 1st. Well, back here locally in Spokane, we have several red light cameras. According to the city's website, there are red light cameras at 10 intersections. The city says the lights are to change drivers behavior and have more drivers obey traffic signals. Funds from violator citations go towards supporting neighborhood traffic improvement projects. For a list of where those cameras are located, you can find them on the city's website. And again, like we mentioned, we were wanting some of you to chime in with that. At this point, a lot of you saying, yeah, get uh, rid of them. No red light cameras. That's right. And we're going to keep that poll up. So if you're just waking up and grabbing your phone now, we'll keep that open. We're going to be checking back checking in, in on all those results. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. that's right. All right, 507 now. Well, it was all about giving back during the University of Washington's barbecue in George Washington. The band hosted a thank you barbecue for the George community. It was for their help following a bus crash last Thanksgiving. The Quincy High School gym was packed yesterday. It wasn't about remembering the wreck, but rather to show their appreciation for the help they received during a scary moment. On the night of the crash, many first responders came to the scene to help the students, while many in the community came to share their Thanksgiving meals. Being able to come back now, so many months la later, um, I'm just glad that I'm here today standing and to be able to fully show my appreciation and to be able to see the entire community. Sometimes we make a big deal of the differences between Eastern and Western Washington, the big differences between the Huskies and the Cougars, but at the end of the day, we're Washingtonians, we care for each other, and we're here to say thanks. Hey, good to hear. The UW Marching Band also gave the community a total of about $5,000 in donations as a way to say thanks. They also presented them with a plaque to always remember their gratitude. That's a good showing there. I'm glad that they were able to make that a possibility. And for those young, you know, music students being able to play with the big band. Yeah, it's not often yeah, you, you know, have, yeah, that's cool. A, a big band coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, in other news this morning, a local eight-year-old is bringing his impressive skills to a national braille competition at the end of this month. Krem 2's Kiera L. Fallen is telling us he is the only student from the Pacific Northwest going to the finals. Good morning, Kiera. Yes, good morning. Well, Russell Winkler is a pretty impressive second grader who is very excited to be heading to California at the end of this month to compete. Nine other students in Winkler's age range will also be there. He says he's a little nervous, but you'll soon see it's kind of hard to tell. <gasps> yes! Enthusiasm isn't a big enough word for Russell Winkler. People are drawn to him naturally because of his personality. But his ability to connect with people You tell the funniest jokes isn't his only skill. I am a winner of something for very special for the blind called the Braille Challenge. 
Lona Gately has been working with Winkler since he was six months old. She says he is the top of his class at Garfield Elementary in reading, writing, and math. I told his parents when he was very young that he was going to do big things that you could just tell from an early age. She was right, and now the two are getting ready for the biggest competition yet. But it's not the first time he's competed. Last year I couldn't complete anything. This year I completed everything. And I'm way smarter this year. Dots, dots too. He hopes to win, but that's not his biggest dream. I wanted to start a school for the blind because, you know, there's really no schools for blind kids. There's mostly just like special ed classroom. But I want to make a school where blind kids can come and learn the experience about Braille. Couldn't be more proud of him for his hard work that he's put in to get to this point. I am very proud and I like to give a shout out to my family. Look who won now. <laughs> so good. Winkler also said he would love to give a shout out to his teachers as well. The competition will take place on June 21st and 22nd at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. And as you can see, he's really excited yeah. in life or about life in general, but also about the competition. That's really cool. Yeah. He's so cute, so smart, and I love that he's giving a shout out to his parents and his teachers, of course. I had to, to put that in there. there. I could yes. not put so that in there. It's not often, there. yeah. I, I can't leave the shout out. <laughs> so yeah, he's really cute. He's excited and we'll have to see how he does. Of course, we're going to follow his story because that's so exciting. Kira, thank you so much for bringing us that story. It is 5-11 now and round two of the NBA Finals just wrapped up. We will bring you some highlights from on and off the court. Wazoo grad was also at the game, but he was pulled out of the game early. We'll tell you why. And take a look outside to start off our Monday morning. So far, we're seeing a few clouds in the sky, but no chance of showers as the day goes on. Find out when those chances of showers increase coming up after the break.